It's mostly gone. <laughs> we will take that, but we'll give you the first comment. Coach. Wow. Um, the missing piece. Um, I'm just so happy for all these players and the organization who bought into what I was selling seven years ago. Um, that there was a path to get out of what was a pretty desperate time here. And if people would buy in, the path would get accelerated. And uh, this girl right here was one of the first pieces. Um, one of our draft picks that, um, you know, the maturity and growth that she's shown um, since she showed up as a 19-year-old. the heck are you now, 26? Yeah. 26. And she's still a youngster. Um, how much her confidence has grown, what a great um, teammate she is. I think one of the best things about this team is, is the camaraderie and the family atmosphere in this team. They love each other. Uh, they played for each other. When we had our toughest moment uh, tonight uh, in the third quarter, um, we banded together, played like we had all year. Obviously, Emma and Elena and, and Christy and others, Tosh, that group that was on the floor, Ariel, the both Ariels. I mean, I didn't sub much in the second half. You know, Latoya and uh, I think Ariel Powers might have been the only other ones that played um, besides the group I just mentioned. And they, they, just, they just were warriors. Um, you know, we've talked about that uh, all year, that stay in the moment, be who you are. And they were. They, they stayed true to character. Uh, down the stretch, and I'm just, I'm, I'm so proud. I'm happy for our fans. You know, I don't know, whatever it is, 21, 22 years, I don't even remember. There's a lot of people that stuck with this group. And when we came here seven years ago on the heels of a 5 and 29 season, uh, this thing was on the brink. And uh, to see what's happened, this building, uh, everything else that's gone with it, I, I appreciate it so much. And, and everybody in this organization, the Wizards, the Caps, everybody has supported us. You know, you saw John and Brad there tonight. Um, they, they've been on board with us, and this is, this is a great feeling. This is what a family feels like. All right, everybody, we're going to begin. We have our other Washington players that we're going to bring in momentarily, but we're going to begin right now with Coach and Emma. First two questions will come front row center. Doug. Hey, Mike. Doug Feinberg, the AP. You actually had some time to sort of think in the last 30 seconds there because it didn't come down to a buzzer beater. I'm curious what was going through your mind as the clock is winding down. You knew Make the game free was throws. over. <laughs> <laughs> well, before that, that, last 30 after seconds, yeah. uh, I turned and looked at uh, my staff, uh, Eric and Marianne and Maria and all those guys down there. and All the work that they've done behind the scenes, uh, I felt great at that moment because, you know, that's, you know, that's not what everybody sees. It's all the glamour part that everybody sees. But I, th I see... Natasha and Elaine and those guys in the gym in January with Eric or, you know, Maria or somebody working on stuff. Uh, I thought about all of the little things that have to go into putting the team together and how happy I was for that whole group. And I was looking at fans who I'd seen since the day I came here. I looked across, you know, away. There were people sitting in the front row who had been here since I came here. And to see the, the joy on their face, that's what this is all about. I mean, we're an entertainment business, but entertainment... And, and all that satisfaction was incredible. Next question, front row center. Uh, Howard Magdal, New York Times. I have a question for you. During that decisive period of time in the third quarter where you had an opportunity to consistently uh, drive the ball, score the ball, was this going to be something that you would have been in your skill set and something you would have done as recently as a year ago? Or is this part of what we talked about earlier this year of, of finding a different level for yourself. Um, I just really, really wanted to win this game. So I just came on the court and I knew that um, it was a moment that we needed some energy. And I was just going at the basket and was going in. So I just kept going. Um, Coach has been talk talking about if your shot is going in or even not, you just have to take your opportunity. Um, and I don't think that I would have done this a year ago, two years ago, in the past. I think that's this, these playoffs were the moment that I really realized that I have to take my responsibility and I can play, you know. Um, so that's just what I did, you know. Uh, but it's really not something that I would have done in the past few years. 
Not sure, yeah. She's one of the top players in the world. Mike, Emma, next question. Second row all the way to the left. Thanks. Emma, Mike, congratulations. Uh, from day one from Media Day, the motto of this team has been run it back. I, I'm curious what, now that you've achieved the goal that you all set out for, what that motto did to fuel each of you personally, if you could share something that you feel you improved on this year because of that motto, because of the team camaraderie behind it. Go ahead. When I first came back um, from missing last year, um, I kind of knew in the back of my head that we were going to do it because I felt the difference in the past few years. It was that being hungry to take that last extra step. Um, so running back is like exactly what describes our team or our season this this year. Um, it just the team really changed by last year, by the experience, by going to the finals and not winning it. Um, so I think that model was a perfect model for us, just to motivate us to do that. Yeah. We have two more uh, questions from uh, Mike and Emma. Uh, no, I, Sorry, I was going to answer. The, the only other thing about the running back for me was. Um, the coach is a little different than the players in that regard. When you say run it back, you're already thinking to getting to this point. And I think a coach's job, and I think our players followed along, is to stay in the moment, though. Uh, the worst thing you can do is think that, you know, because you got there, you, you deserve to get there again. I think this team was terrific in staying in the day-to-day -day process. There's a process to getting this done. It's individual work. It's team work, it's video work, it's scattering reports. And if you look too far ahead, you lose uh, sight of the little things you have to do to get better. And I think the one thing that this team can say is that we got better all year long. Um, and it's because they were able to not jump a month ahead or you know two months ahead, is that you know we had a goal uh, to try to get home court advantage. It ended up being a difference. And that work that we put in to get the fifth game on our court paid off tonight because this crowd was great, our energy was great, and so, but, but you don't do that in the last two weeks of the season, you do that throughout, and I think they've been great at it. We have two more questions for Mike and Emma, and then we're going to bring up the other Washington players. Those of you who have questions, we will get to you on the second bunch. Second row center. Amber D. Dodd, Hoopfee.com, congratulations to you both. Um, Emma. Of course, you hear missing piece, missing piece, missing piece all season, and um, especially in the series. Can you just talk about how that was motivation um, and how that just fuel for you to just continuously dominate throughout this playoff series? Um. <laughs> I think it put pressure on her, to be honest with you. We, she was more nervous the other day than she was today, I think. Oh, no, that, I was opposite. Yeah. <laughs> today I was so nervous. You were more nervous today? Holy no. smokes, okay. <laughs> she uh, looked more calm today, so. Um, I've never really believed that because um, I know that last year I would not be the same player this year. Uh, I just think that I really need, needed that break and to be home. Um, so I would not have been able to bring what I brought now. Um, so I'm just glad that I got that confidence from the team, you know, that we, they had my back and they gave me the support. Without them, I would not be able to do what I did today, you know. Um, so it's, I've said that it was like my family and I really mean that. Emma, Emma Mike, standing to your right. Hey, Mike, Jean Wong, Washington Post. Those of us who were at Elena's introductory news conference remember her talking about championships right away. Did Sear make good on that with a herniated disc in most of the series? Did that maybe reveal something about her grit that you may not have known before she got here? Well, I, I always felt she had grit. It's just that sometimes you need the opportunity to display it. Um, you know, she was injured in the Chicago finals that year and, and a lot more injured, I think, than she was here. Um, I, I credit our medical staff uh, and, our, and our physical therapist for doing an unbelievable job uh, with all of our players, her, Ariel, uh, Christie's injury coming back. Uh, we've had a lot more bumps and bruises and injuries that we've kind of not hid from everybody, but we just don't talk about as a team. And, um, you know, I think they did their great job, but you, you got to want to play through something. You got to love your teammates so much uh, that you play for the person in the room next to you. And, you know, they're not playing, no offense to anybody else, but they're playing first for each other. And I think that took precedence, and that's why their grit comes out, uh, because that meant, that meant that much to them. Mike, Emma, thank you. To our media, we have our other Washington players here right now. 
Victor Oladipo tweeting what a great game. Both teams played great. Congratulations to the Washington Mystics on winning their first WNBA Finals. I can't wait to have that same feeling. Actually, your first question is going to come seated to your right in the front row. Martenzi Johnson, oh, the undefeated. Um, this is for Christy and Natasha. Um, your team is one of the more active teams in the social issues realm. With that comes criticisms of shut up and dribble, shut up and play. Uh, I guess with a championship now, what do you think of that line of thinking that you can't do both at the same time? Take it, Tosh. <laughs> this is for you. <laughs> um, for me, shut up and watch. Uh, where watch this mic. is a league full of powerful women. Um, I'm not biased in the sense of the WNBA has been at the forefront of all social issues. Um, and our team has been phenomenal. We're in the most powerful city in the world. There's a lot of politics and issues that are handled here in D.C. So uh, we'd be doing a disservice to a bunch of people if we didn't speak up and use our platform. So um, those people that say that we should just shut up and dribble, they should just shut up and watch us. Next question in the last row to your left. Congratulations, guys. Um, question for all three of you. What sort of role has Emma played for this team? And, and she seemed almost like she was surprised to get the MVP honors. What does that say about her? And, and what do you think about her winning tonight? I'll say this. <laughs> Messi. <laughs> Messi is a very, very, very good basketball player. And I think coming from Belgium, coming from a smaller country, you know, where sport isn't everything, it's not like that big of a deal. The platform isn't as big. When it's here, obviously, it's enormous. Mm -hmm. So for her, her just her humility, just being a good person, a great teammate, an amazing basketball player, um, she was the missing piece. Mm -hmm. um, and so obviously, we're all extremely thankful that, that she was here this year. Um, she was the difference. Mm -hmm. And she has also grown because I've had an opportunity to play with her even in Europe and, and won championships with her in Europe. But the way she played tonight and the moments that she wanted the ball in the biggest moments. Mm -hmm. And a couple of years ago, she didn't. Yeah. And so that's a huge credit to her and her growth um, as a player and a person. So she was, she was enormous for us. Next question, first row to your right. Jonathan Tannenbaum from the Philadelphia Inquirer to Elena and Natasha. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how does it feel to finally won a championship? Oh, head though. This is your mean, moment. It feels phenomenal. I've like asked Panda about it. Like, how does it feel? What's it like? Panda, how can I get one? <laughs> um, but my goodness, this feels so good. It's hard to even put it to words, but to win this and win this with such a great group of people, I think that's what makes this so special. Like, we wanted to win this for the person next to us. It wasn't about winning it for ourselves. And um, to get this done and to get this for somebody like Toya, who's an absolute anchor for this team, um, that's, that's what means the most, and that's what we're going to take away, and that's what we'll remember forever. Mm -hmm. We're going to remember this season because we were around such incredible people, and we absolutely adore being together. So I'm kind of sad. Like, absolutely. <laughs> season's about to be over. I'm going to miss everybody, but my goodness, we sure ended this on a high note. Next question. Uh, seated center, third row. William Ford, Washington Informer, uh, mainly for you, Natasha. In terms of fun, you guys have talked a lot about being in, enjoying yourselves. A lot of hard work, but still fun. Mm -hmm. Why was it so much fun? I think Elena just talked about it. Um, we've created this atmosphere here where we're a family, um, where we enjoy coming into work every single day, whether it's practice or you know film work. Uh, we enjoy coming in because we're around each other. Um, and when you have that type of atmosphere, it makes this game fun. You know, at a professional level, it's really hard to get that. And I've seen that with being here for five years now. Um, I've seen it in different teams, but the last two years, I've thoroughly enjoyed just coming in and working and getting better every single day. Um, and it's mainly because of the people that we surround ourselves with. Our yeah, I mean, no one on this team gives a crap about getting credit. Mm -hmm. um, like the stat sheet, <laughs> throw that thing away. Mm -hmm. Nobody cares. And I know like teams will say that about 
themselves, but this is true here. Like, mm-hmm. as long as we get a W at the end of the day, that's all that we've ever cared about, and Absolutely. that's what makes basketball fun. That's like when you were kids playing, why it was so fun, and that's why this season's been so fun. Absolutely. Our next two questions. She's not trying to get any free agents by saying. <laughs> <laughs> that clear. Next two questions from front row center, Doug. Uh, Doug Feinberg, the AP. Uh, Elaine, I mean, every time you get in the final, it seems something goes wrong with you physically, right? I mean, Chicago last year, the knee, the bone bruise this year, the back, everything else that's bothering you. Yeah. Just talk about, I mean, what it means with what you've gone through this year, injury-wise, and in the past, and not come, been successful, but now to actually get a title, that, not that it's worth it, but what it means from that. And also, the second question is, I saw you and Coach had a, Seemed like a long chat in center court after the buzzer sound and confetti's going out. Just what you said to him, because I know you talked before how important it was to win a title for him. Yeah, so I've contemplated like long hours over like why every time I get to a final something <laughs> happens. And I think it's because I pissed the basketball gods off years ago when I decided to step away. <laughs> so I'm hoping this ends this little drama that I've been having in the finals. <laughs> um, but... Yeah, to be on a team that could carry me uh, when I wasn't 100% uh, really means a lot to just get over this hump um, and to be able to push through when not feeling great. And then um, Coach and I, we've had this little thing through the playoffs where we go up to each other and say, have I told you lately that I love you? Um, Even in like bad losses where we're kind of like angry at each other, (laughs) uh, we do that to like keep ourselves going. and to realize how much we do love each other and um, how much I've trusted in him by coming here to DC and believing in his dream and um, him just putting together this team that is just so great um, on the court and off the court. So um, I also said I was very happy that I am one of the players and this is the team that was able to bring him something he hasn't done yet. Front row center. Uh, hold on, and let me also add to that because I'm about to drop this bomb on y'all. <laughs> Elena not only has one herniated disc, she has three. And when you're talking about... The medical staff is going to kill you right oh, now. Oh, I don't but. care. But when you're talking about... But it, it's, it's so important because when you're talking about playing for the players to the left and to the right of you and being a leader on this team and being one of the captains and pushing through to win us a championship, I mean, that's a huge testament to both her and Ariel in this last series. So... Again, thank you, Della. <laughs> Love you, Tash. Yeah. Three of them things. Three of them. Yeah. All right, front row center. Next question. <laughs> Lay out. Surprise. Yeah. <laughs> They're going to kill me. <laughs> They're going to kill, They're gonna kill me. <laughs> Y'all lock in with me for one more year. <laughs> Front row center. Elena, Howard Medell, New York Times. Congratulations. Congratulations to all of you. I'm hoping you to take me through what was your mindset. It seemed like, you know, in game three, a lot of it was staying uh, around the perimeter. Game four was more of the attacking. Game five tonight, it just seemed like it was fundamentally the way you attacked the game, despite three herniated discs. And, and just if you'd take me through you're thinking about that, you know, how much of this was just knowing it was all on the line here and how hard it was. Yeah, um, we have a great medical staff, so um, they've been able to, you know, help me a lot in this week of just trying to get me to feel as good as I possibly can. Um, so they've been huge, just getting treatment every day and, you know, get me the right meds, all that. Um, but yeah, I felt pretty decent today, and I also knew this is the last game. You know, I can rest now. Um, so I, I felt like you know I was able to kind of give a little bit more, um, especially on the defensive end, just trying to box out Jean Quell, trying to keep her off the boards because she's a monster on the boards. Um, thank you. Oh, four. Ow. Four. <laughs> yeah, shit, actually, there's four. <laughs> it got me excited. <laughs> um, yeah, but I mean, it, it just felt great to be out there and to be able to compete. And um, well, I guess I just said ne- before, this team is so good and was able to help carry me through. Our next three questions will all come standing to your left. We're going to be uh, one, then Michelle and Ava. Go ahead, please. <laughs> no, Michelle, please. Oh, with the microphone, please. Oh, she had three. With the microphone, please. Hey, um, Capri, Women's Sports Report. Um, this season, you guys' mantra was run it back. Can you guys talk about how that propelled you guys to win this year's championship? 
Go ahead, Panda. That's you, Panda. Yeah, that's your that motto. Good. Oh, it was my motto? You it really was. It really was. Um, it was actually Flaves. Was it? John's guy. Oh, okay. Oh. This is teamwork versus the dream work. Uh, I mean, you know, when you have an experience like last year and you get to the finals and you don't get what you want, um, you're extremely motivated for the next year. And so as soon as the buzzer sounded, we were ready to rock and roll. And everybody did their part, whether they were here in America or they were playing overseas. Everybody knew the goal and the purpose. And everyone trained that way. And so for us, as we started the season, run it back was, I mean, it was, it's old school. It's, you know, you're playing on the street and you're the next ones up. It's like, you lose, run that back. <laughs> Good. I'm very <laughs> proud of myself for not cursing right now. It's yeah, really I was good. Really proud to yeah. run it back. Good. So we just embraced that. We embraced just the, you know, there's two ways you can go. You can feel sorry for yourself, mm-hmm. feel like, man, why me? How come it didn't go our way? Or you can regroup and you can really be determined for greatness. Mm-hmm. And this team was determined for greatness. And it, it took five games, it took four in the semis. It took battling injuries. It took a lot of uh, resilience, fight, heart. We had the biggest heart all year, Mm -hmm. and we were the most focused and determined team all year. And um, we're just really proud of of what we've done. But last year obviously certainly motivated us to to be really, really focused for the season. Two more questions. Michelle and Ava. Michelle, please. Um, Elena. I'm sorry, Elena. I know part of your journey has always been um, your sister, and mm-hmm. that how that impacted your entire journey. This, you know, going to Delaware and then getting this trade. Um, mm-hmm. I know you can't share this with her probably the way you would like mm-hmm. to, but what does it mean to have a championship when you consider what that journey's been like and how you put her first in mm-hmm. a lot of ways? Yeah, I mean, Lizzie has been my journey, and some people have never understood my decisions um others have um but she's been my path and somehow uh she's she's gotten me to this moment and um you know it's been it's been a crazy journey it's been my own path it's been different from everyone else's and i've just kind of believed in it and you got to follow your heart and i've always trusted in her um you know another reason i can battle through injuries like she's been dealt the worst cards possible uh, with her disabilities. And every day she gets up, she smiles, she laughs, she loves. Um, So she's always just been my inspiration. And I was talking to her all game long, like trying to have them miss free throws. I'm like, come on, Liz, give me a little something. (laughs) Um, So yeah, she she doesn't know it. She doesn't even know I'm a basketball player. Um, But she's been my biggest motivator. And she's brought me here. And she's brought me to this moment. So. Once again, I got to give all credit to her. Next question, standing to your left, Ava. <laughs> um, you guys have set a three-point mark in the WNBA this season and had four of them tonight. Um, what <laughs> what happened in the fourth quarter when it was pretty much you guys and Emma? What was your mindset going into that stretch? Where you finally, <laughs> what, what is, I don't know. What that Those means. are her three goggles. Oh yeah, a lot of my three goggles. Touch. Um, what was your mindset in that fourth quarter when you guys? kind of muscled your way into getting a little separation without doing it the normal way? Just the goggles? <laughs> That's our answer. I mean, every game is different. And and Deli and Messi were dominating on the block. And that was a high percentage shot for us, those twos. We will take those twos all day long. So if the three ball's not going down, that just shows the strength and the and diversity of our team. You know, we can score with twos, we can score with threes. And tonight, um, it wasn't the three ball. And that just kind of shows the makeup of our team. There's not one way to to try to beat us. We're going to find a way. Standing to your right, next question. Hi. uh, David Aldridge with The Athletic, uh, DC. Uh, Oftentimes when a team wins a championship, in reflection, they say it wasn't so much that they wanted to win, it's just that they didn't want to lose. They hated losing, the idea of losing so much. And so I wonder in those last eight to 10 minutes where you guys went mentally to try to get those stops and to, as was said, go inside to win the, as opposed to shooting threes. I'll just say something, then y'all can finish yeah. it. Okay. All I said before the game to the team was regret nothing. Mm-hmm. Um, 
and you guys take it from there. <laughs> And we didn't regret anything. Yeah, no. I don't. I don't think in, in our minds during the you know duration of the game that it came up. You know, we don't want to lose. Um, like Chrissy said, this team wanted greatness, mm -hmm. and greatness comes with that will to win and that will to push through and get okay. stops and do all the little things that are necessary. Um, and we did that on the defensive end. Um, for us, the last couple of huddles, those last eight minutes, it was all about defense and rebounding. And the team that could do that the best was the team that was going to win. Mm -hmm. All right, we have two more questions. Third row center. Chrissy, you were the only one on this team to um, win a championship, and now you have another one. But what makes this championship feel different um, than the previous one? Um, well, it's different. I mean, the people are different, obviously. And I love these people. <laughs> I, I mean, I love the other people, too. So don't stand corrected. Um, <laughs> I think it's special when you are able to make history, mm -hmm. and we made history tonight, and that just takes it to a whole different level. Um, you know, everybody says, like, you'll never forget your first. Like, I'll never forget my first, but this one, with these guys and the relationships that I have with them, I mean, I love them. Like, <laughs> these guys are my family. Like, I would do anything for them. So for me, just coming out tonight, I mean, I didn't play great. Like, I mean, I made some free throws at the end of the game. Huge. But it, clutch. Huge. Okay. See, that's why I love them. They they, they built me up. Right, but I, go ahead. Go, go ahead. Go. go ahead. It was the bomb. <laughs> this feels great. Right, we have about two more questions. We have about two more questions. Hey now. Hey now. Hey, hey, going? Hey, wait, wait, going with that? That's going. That's going to the room for your photos. Sex standing to the left. Okay. If you could maybe shine Mario. it. It's a little, yeah, it's got champagne dirty, all over it. A little musty. It. Yeah. yeah. Clean that sucker up. It smells too. <laughs> standing to your left. Neil Vall, Hoop District. Um, for any of you guys, when you guys were down, who was, what was being said in the huddle and the timeouts and to guy, keep you guys focused? Hey, this mofo right here, she, she stepped up. I mean, we know she's from Philly, so she talks a lot. Yeah. So she's just like... <laughs> Sorry. But it was great. She's, but that's yeah. what makes us us too. Everybody has her thing. Yeah. She talks a lot. Sorry. She obviously does what she does. <laughs> I mean, I'm like, they're calling me now the OG or the triple OG. I'm just the old head now. So it's like my role is kind of, you know, whatever. <laughs> Tosh, <laughs> Tosh stepped up huge tonight. Just, she did. Just communicating, communicating, communicating. Mm -hmm. Just saying everything that everybody was already thinking. Yeah. And her growth, like this year, has been to a whole nother level. Mm -hmm. Y'all are wrong for not making her defensive player of the year. Y'all are all wrong for that. Yeah. But she uses that, she used that as motivation. Mm -hmm. And whatever. I mean, Tasha's the shit. Yeah. Thanks, y'all. Yeah. See, Tosh. the atmosphere. All right, we have three more questions. So, uh, second row to your right. All right, Tosh, uh, Mel, Gr Mel Greenberg. What's up, Mel? Speaking of <laughs> Philly. Your junior, your junior and senior year, they were coming around a lot. Mm -hmm. Nobody else was. Did that kind of convince you that, yes, I can do this thing? Yeah, I can become a WNBA player. Um, yeah, I don't really, like, personally talk about my journey a lot, but um, I had one coach in one organization believe in me um, when I transferred from Maryland for family reasons, um, kind of similar to Elena. Um, you know, I understood that I was giving up this dream in a sense. And so when Coach T and Eric started coming around, um, it kind of sparked that, you know, that energy back in me that this was a possibility. Um, this has been a five-year process. Um, I've been trying to grow uh, in all these years. I'm still not perfect. There's still a lot of room to grow. Um, but I definitely take my path and my journey, and I'm proud of myself for where I am now to where I was then. Because you would ask anyone, no one expected me to be here. So to be a part of this team, to be a part of this organization, and to make you know history here, it means everything to me. Two more questions. Standing to your left in the back. You all worked so hard to get the number one seed to have the home court advantage. You're all from the East Coast. And Tasha talking about the connections with your family. But with that being said, how important was it during that surge in the fourth quarter to feel the energy from the home court crowd? I mean, it just felt like there's no turning back once we got that lead. Um, they were just roaring. Mm -hmm. You could see it on Connecticut's face, like that, like, oh, God. <laughs> They've Absolutely. they've got momentum. They've got the crowd. They've got everything. Um, 
I mean, I'm not going to lie. We kind of wanted to win it in four, but now that we won it in five. Nobody wanted to win it in Connecticut. Yeah. That's true. You Connecticut know, stinks. We would just be you guys back were there. in our room. I just wanted to win it. Though. I haven't seen the daylight in five days. <laughs> like, we in got Connecticut. sun now. <laughs> we no. are feeling good. Yeah. It's, it's great here in We DC. have blue crabs here. <laughs> what? We do. <laughs> do we? Do we? we? Do. I mean, who are. <laughs> So, yeah, it was great to win it in D.C. <laughs> Last question. Standing to your left, Michelle. So I know this is really ancient history for all of you guys, but Mary Ann Stanley got a title tonight, too, and she is one of the legends in women's basketball. Won an NCAA <laughs> title back in 85, was on the Immaculata team. So I mean, really one of the pioneers. Um, what has she meant? Any of you or each of what has she meant to you guys? And, and Stan, she's 65 Stan, and getting this, along with, along with Mike Tebow getting one. Oh, I love Stans. Um, she's the post coach, so I can probably talk a little bit more about her. Um, but Stans, she's just cool. <laughs> um, you know, she always has the post back. She She's always a voice on the bench when things aren't going well. She's just kind of keeping our heads in the game, um, keeping us feeling good about ourselves. And then Stans is also like an X's and O's genius. Yes. Uh, I don't know if people know that about her, but... Mm -hmm. She drew up in practice one day, like, we 10 out-of-bounds plays. We scored on all And 10. we scored every single time, like, wide-open threes or wide-open layups. Like, Stan's, she's a phenomenal coach. And, you know, I'm not in the coaches' meetings, but I'm sure she has had a ton to do with this and mm -hmm. why we're so great, why our, our offense is flowing so well. So to see her get this is really special, too. She's an awesome person. Mm -hmm. She deserves it. I think it's really cool. I just want to say, like, real yeah. quick, that she was one of the first players that played in Madison Square Garden. Mm -hmm. And so, like, I mean, that's just, like, to be around a person like that in the history yeah. of our game, mm -hmm. and she just won her first, you know, title as a coach, that's just special. Mm -hmm. And so I'm, we're just really, really happy for her. Mm -hmm. Yes.